are currently we're, with our friends ditch, Dana like and Dennis, and they live here. And look at, we are on their deck boat getting ready for a sunset cruise. Look at this. Look at this. This is absolutely amazing. I don't know if you can see, there's a cruise ship right there in Key West. So that's town right there. And our boat is just on the other side of those trees. Oh, this is spectacular. She was the food guide. She's fabulous. There's Dan and Denny. I guess I'm the only. We got Dana, Denny, Dan, and Robin. All right, there we go. And there's the sun. Sun. Look at. Can you tell my kindergarten teacher? Sun. Sun. Ooh. at the famous Blue Heaven restaurant. This a long time ago was, I believe, a brothel. Um, we're in the Palma village um, of the, uh, the island. It's lovely. It's a lot of Bahamian colors. A lot of the Bahama population lived, lived here at one time. Um, it's on the corner of Thomas and Petronia, and it's supposed to have the best breakfasts um, and a little bit vegan friendly. There's also a little, I believe, a rooster chicken hen cemetery. So we're gonna check all that out. We're on a waiting list, there's always a line, but it's only about 10 minutes and then they'll text you. But here we are at the Blue Heaven, waiting to eat some yummy breakfast. We learned on our food tour with Dana that this backyard actually used to be a boxing ring. And the story goes, Ernest Hemingway's had a home here, as you know, and he had a boxing ring in his backyard. And what was the story, Dan? His wife didn't like him boxing all the time? Well, his wife found out he had a uh, mistress when he was over in Europe covering the war. And uh, so she got mad at him and she took, took out the boxing ring and made a, a put it in a swimming pool. pool. That's right. So he said, well, I'll show you. So he went a few doors down and put in a uh, boxing ring at the local brothel, which is what this building used to be. Right, and this, so this area was the boxing ring, somewhere he back would, here. He would box, spar with people here, and he would also referee matches between other people. Boxing. And probably still had mistresses. <laughs> well, it's certainly his timing way, yeah. Yeah, so this Blue Heaven has a lot of history. All right, here in Blue Heaven is the famous off the beaten path rooster cemetery and these are the famous roosters that once pecked these grounds and as they went over the rooster and chicken rainbow bridge they were buried here oreo queen among layers coach forever in our hearts there it is one of the oldest burial grounds of on the island hemingway buried his cock here monsieur le plume a beautiful most beautiful cock and here lies Ricky. He came, he saw, he conquered. So oh, all right there, little chickens. Let me hear him. Amen. Amen. A little homage, a little nod, a little wink to the brothel. Showers, one dollar to watch. Two dollars. Kevin. And there's Captain Dan enjoying his shrimp and um, shrimp omelet and the famous banana bread made here. I guess it has sour cream in it. And then for me, they made some sauteed vegetables, avocado toast, homemade bread. The pico de gallo is to die for. Deliciousness. Enjoying it, Captain Dan? Very good. We're heading to Truman's house. It's called the Little White House. 
lots of history. We're going to do a little tour here. Um, I know JFK stayed here, Carter stayed here, maybe Eisenhower, I know Thomas Edison. Um, so this will be pretty cool to see all the history in here. However, we've been told you cannot take any photos or video. So you'll just have to visualize it with my beautiful prose. Right, Captain Dan? Sure. We're in the sitting room. This is the only room we're allowed to take pictures in. Fireplace. But what's really cool is this is his piano, and he would have it moved back and forth to the White House. That's pretty cool. But here's my favorite was his desk with the buck stops here. steel drum music right here as we're near Mallory Square and right here we're about to enter the Malfisher Treasure Museum. So these are the actual anchors from the Atosha and they each weigh about 2,000 pounds. And my favorite part about this little display is if you look right there there's a hen and her baby chicks. Cute as that. So we're going to go check out all his treasure. It was like 400 million, I think. Uh, we're going to find out. A lot, lot of information. So I'm ready to go check out Mel Fisher Maritime Museum. Maybe I'll get some gold. Ooh, like that idea. We just left the Malfisher Maritime Museum. That, that's that was cool. incredible. Yeah. That was really interesting and wow, what a what a lot of wealth. Holy cow. Yeah. That family is loaded now. Yeah. yeah um something you learned. The, okay, I'm one still thing. Have my badge on here. Oh, yeah. look at you. Yeah, you're important. It's silver. My badge is on somewhere. So you get a little badge to wear. And we got little recording devices to listen to for an extra two bucks. It was a pretty good, very good tour. It's right near um, Mallory Square. Okay, something I learned um, where the word pieces of eight came from. I was wrong. I thought it was like because it was an eighth of an ounce, or, and I guessed that. And then later I found out that the Spaniards called pieces of silver um, pesos. Mm -hmm. And then the English-speaking people changed that from pesos to pieces of eight. So right. pesos to pieces but of I think eight. it was an eighth of an ounce, though, too. It, the small one was an eighth of an ounce, yeah. but the big one was not. Yeah. But, yeah, but so that was a peso and turned into pieces of eight. Okay. Cool. All right, what's something yeah, you learned, uh, Captain? I learned a lot about the history of the Spanish uh, conquest by the conquistadors of the, uh, oh, yeah. the, the New World, as it was known. Yeah. Uh, and the exploitation of all the mineral wealth and this stealing of the silver and the gold and taking it back to Spain. And it made Spain the world's first superpower. Right, right. Because it didn't make it, Spain went bankrupt and they, they, they you know, they went into bankruptcy several times. And it, they finally just lost their status as a superpower. But they said that if that had not happened, if all the treasure had made it, uh, 
the U.S., what's now the U.S., would probably still be a Spanish-speaking country. Boundaries would, would be different. And all the boundaries would be different. And, uh, and America, USA would not be different. number one. I thought that was really, really cool. And Once Spain might still be the, the superpower. Olay. Is that I guess so. So, things we learned on the Mel Fisher Maritime Museum tour. Growing our brains. just arrived at the Key West Cemetery. Uh, the original was devastated by a hurricane in 1846. This one was built further inland and um, it holds five graves, so two below and three on top, and it's divided into cultural diversity. And just by the look of it, it is a very, very different cemetery than what I'm used to. So we are going to go on a self-guided tour there are some highlights we want to see, and luckily we can ride our bike. And we're noticing a lot of them say, ascended. Ascended, so that's really cool. All right, Captain Dan is ready. So this section of the cemetery is dedicated to the uh, USS Maine victims. The explosion in Havana Harbor that uh, basically caused the entrance of the US into the Spanish-American War. The main disaster was basically used as a pretext. They blamed it on the uh, Spanish blowing up the ship when it was really probably a faulty boiler. That was the uh, pretext that led to sentiment for entering the war against Spain. This one is a conch shell, and it belongs to Sir Peter Anderson, Secretary General of the Conch Republic. He had fun. This is an interesting one here. It's uh, got a bunch of beads on it. It says, born in April of 1940 in Columbus, Ohio died in 2007 in Key West and it's signed Captain Outrageous. C.B. Harvey was the mayor and his wife Wilhelmina Harvey was the Admiral of the Conch Republic. Here's one Rebecca Dillon. She's just away. Frank Booth of the Rough Riders and he was in the Spanish-American War. Willard Antonio Gomez, 1895 to 1987, a rum runner during Prohibition. He smuggled liquor from Cuba. He was Ernest Hemingway's principal source of material for the novel, To Have and Have Not. And here's a newer gravestone with his wife. Okay, this is pretty famous if you Google weird epitaphs. B.P. Roberts, she went by the name of Pearl says, I told you I was sick. Local hypochondriac had the last word with her marker. I told you I was sick. And just above her, Gloria Russell, I'm just resting my eyes. The main disaster was 